What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Caleb and today I'm going to give each and every one of you a complete and full tour of my car collection. Just to start off and give you guys kind of an overview, I've got the newest addition to the collection, the 2006 Corvette Z06. Um, uh, also kind of a new addition. I bought both of these two this year. So uh, my collection definitely expanded. It was just this one car. And then I bought these two within the last year. Um, this one's just going to be about a year old to me. This is a 2010 um, Ford Focus. It's a manual. I'll tell you a little bit about this one more later. But going around to this side over here, this was my first car, my first love, a Mustang GT convertible. Obviously, as you can see here, got a nice black color. So now I'm going to go around and I'm going to drive each and every one of these and tell you a little bit about it, some of my future plans, and uh, show you around the cars. So the Mustang was my first car. I think we should drive that one first. Listen to how loud this exhaust is. This car is always so like fun and loud to drive. I'm not sure my neighbors feel the same way about it though. Listen to the sound echo off the uh, fences and stuff as we pass by here. So everyone says that their first car always has like a special place in their heart. Yes, you might get more cars that are faster or maybe even cars that give you like more of a fun experience, but still nothing replaces your first car. And I can definitely say the same for this. And I know that this one will always hold a special place in my heart. So just kind of give you guys a little walk around of the car. My favorite profile starting in the back here is going to be the rear end. I like the way that this ducktail spoiler really plays with the lines in the car that you can see here coupled with this exhaust system. Obviously you saw earlier in the video that it's crazy, crazy loud. I'm not sure how loud that sounded on camera, but I know that it's crazy loud and everyone around you is going to be looking at you when you pass the street. What it's got done to it is Flowmaster axle backs, BBK Catless X pipe, and then long tube headers. Those are also BBK hooking up to the front. So basically every part of this exhaust system is aftermarket. Moving around to the front here, I've got these wheels are actually off of a 2013, uh, like the track pack. I believe these are the track pack wheels. I'm not entirely sure, but I did get them off of a 2013 uh, Mustang, like the premium. They're either premium wheels or track pack wheels. I'm not sure which ones. Another cool part about this car here are the aftermarket headlights I put in here. We got these cool little halos up front as well. You can see these little halos here and that tiny little light bar. It looks really cool at night, much better than the stock ones in my opinion. And I have also smoked out all the headlights and taillights and everything on this car. Nothing on the interior of this car is like super crazy luxurious. Like it's a Ford. It's not a Bugatti or a Pagani or even a Mercedes. It's nothing crazy, but it's still very nice and it's well kept together. It's pretty much pretty simple, but it still does look good. It's well put together. So I'm sorry this is extremely dirty, but I popped the hood here. So we're going to take a look. This is just going to be a rouse intake. Nothing crazy or, you know, out of this world. But if you can see down there, it's very hot. But right there, those are those long tube headers. Everything on this car I installed and did myself. Um, this definitely, like that long tube header job, definitely pushed my abilities a little bit, but it was a, definitely a learning experience. I would totally do it again in the future. That's pretty much it performance wise. This whole thing's wrapped up with, with a tune on it, but it's not like super crazy performance car, but all these mods still definitely made a difference and woke the car up 100%. Driving the Mustang GT. Um, when the top's down, it's obviously not right now. I, I want to try and reduce some wind noise so maybe you guys can hear me a little bit better. But when the top's down, it's great. It's a lot of fun to drive with the top down in the summer, you know. Maybe you're taking your friends out. It's a lot of fun and an amazing experience. However, unfortunately, I don't get to use that that much. I live in Michigan, so not even including the winter. Like, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's cold. Like. I enjoy it when I get to use it, but unfortunately that's not a whole lot of time. The type of power that this car has is very different than the Z06. When I drive the Z06, it feels so much smoother. This feels just so much more like raw power. So this car is an automatic, so that does obviously have to do with the feel of the car. But some things like the suspension, the type, like the power feels just so much different. The Z06 is a true sports car. 
and it's more of like a smooth, agile machine, whereas the Mustang is more of like a powerful, uh, straight line machine. You don't have that full experience of shifting the gears, but it was my first car, and at the time, um, I wasn't really sure I wanted to get into a manual, partially because my parents kind of encouraged me not to, which is fine. Like, they uh, didn't want me to take on more than they thought was a good idea while I was a new driver. But looking back, I probably would have purchased a manual. I just kind of didn't know better at the time. So if I were to describe this car in one word, I would say that would be fun. It's not the most powerful car on the road. It's not the most powerful car that I own. It's not the most practical, but it is very fun. Like the fun factor of this car is through the roof. One of the reasons why I decided to upgrade it was because I was kind of putting money into this thing. It cost me about $15,000 to buy this, which at the time was pretty much like a, just a flat fair price. It wasn't a great deal. It wasn't, I didn't overpay, but it was a pretty fair price. Obviously that's appreciated since then, but overall I've put in about $5,000 to this car. Now that's everything. That's tune, intake, the full exhaust system. I put new wheels and tires on it. Like that's pretty much everything. So at that time I was like, okay, like I'm kind of just throwing money at a car that this is a V8, but it's not a huge V8. If I'm looking for something that's gonna be like crazy super fast, this isn't gonna be the thing. Yes, it's quick, do not get me wrong. It's still very quick, but it's not like the Z06 obviously. And I kind of felt like I was putting money into something that wasn't necessarily gonna hold its value. And I kind of felt like my money was gonna be more well spent elsewhere. So just to give you guys a few numbers, um, this car is gonna be going to zero to 60 in just about exactly five seconds. I did test that and uh, that's with all the mods and everything considered. The wheel horsepower on this car, I'm gonna estimate this at about just a tad bit over 300. I've never gotten this car dynoed, but considering all the work that's done, that's where I can put the wheel horsepower. It's a pretty solid estimate at pretty much about exactly 300, maybe a tiny bit over that. Now they always say you should save the best for last, so we're gonna drive the Focus. So my absolute favorite part about this car off the bat, Take a look at that gas mileage, 32 miles to the gallon. So here it is in all of its glory, the 2010 Ford Focus. So this is gonna be my daily driver. Obviously this isn't really a crazy sports car or anything of the sort, but it's a nice practical vehicle that I can cart around, I can take it to the grocery store or down a dirt road or pretty much do anything I want without having to worry about it. This thing's got 185, pushing on 190,000 miles. So this thing has definitely been through the ringer and back. You know, it's nothing crazy. I've got some dings, I got some scratches, I got whatever. It's just a car that I can do whatever I want in and I don't have to worry about it. Like, I mean, I don't know, this was here when I bought it, don't know. I even remember walking up to school at it one day and I saw the side of the car. I saw like this right here. I don't know if this is gonna pick up very well, but those are some like scratches. And I thought to myself, I was like, I, did, some, did, did someone hit me? This was like right when I purchased the car. I was like, did somebody hit me? Like, I don't really know if that was there before or not, but I mean, I didn't really care. Like I bought this car for $1,200 at an auction. It was like a charity auction. I do think I got lucky where I found a nice car, but also I looked for a long, long time. Like I was looking for a daily driver for a, quite a while. I have the winter to deal with and I needed something that was gonna be decent in the winter. I kind of wanted to get like a truck or something bigger, but then this came along and for the price and for like how much money this car saves me just on gas alone, it was 100% worth it both financially and just worth it to have something that I cannot have to worry about because I do worry about the other cars. So it's nice to not have to worry about it with this one. To throw a few numbers at you for this one, this one puts down 134 horsepower to the crank and zero to 60 eventually. It's not fast at all very very slow but i do have the manual transmission this was actually my first car that i purchased that was a manual so it was nice to kind of learn on this before i got the manual z06 the interior of this car it's pretty decent it's pretty up to date there's anything that i would really need i have my aux cord i don't have bluetooth which is kind of upsetting but other than that i mean it's comfortable it's a thousand dollar car like there wasn't a whole lot 
that I, I couldn't really be picky when I was only spending just over $1,000. So driving the Ford Focus. Now, this thing's a manual, like I said, so it was kind of cool to be able to learn on this car where uh, I wasn't worried about like ruining a super expensive transmission. I knew how to drive a manual from driving my friend's cars and uh, you know learning when I was like younger. Uh, I, think, I think I learned when I was 17, maybe 16, but uh, I learned on a Camaro SS, so that was kind of cool. But I never actually like experienced having my own manual transmission until I purchased this car. So the fact that this is a manual definitely increases the fun factor of this car. It's nice to have this as a manual, you know, just to spice up driving when I'm in the winter and I can't drive my fun cars. Now, although this isn't crazy, super exciting or anything like that, I don't think that you should sleep on the fact of having a daily driver. It's very important to have one. And in my case, this is actually a financially smart move. Just on gas alone, I saved so much money. So it would definitely be something to look into at least. At the very least, I would really encourage you to look into it. Now the car drives pretty smooth. Um, it's a little bit bouncy, but I mean, it's nothing crazy. Like it's, like I said, this is a thousand dollar car. I really don't care a whole lot about this car in the sense like if I ruin it, I know it's gonna happen eventually. I mean, it's got 190,000 miles on it. Uh, one day something bad is gonna happen to the point where I have to get rid of this car. I'm hoping to keep the car until then. I don't really have any plans to get out of the car unless it's too much, or unless it costs too much to fix it. Then I'll probably just scrap it or get whatever money I can out of it and then look at getting something new. But the reason I bought this car was to save money, to have something that I can rely on, to you know have something I don't really have to worry about, a, a nice daily driver that's not like super nice to the point where I have to worry about it, but also, you know, it's got luxury, I mean, I don't want to say luxury features, but up-to-date features that I can still use, and it's not like some trap house on wheels. All right, all right, it's that time. It's Corvette time. It's actually turning into kind of a nice day today. Push to start, baby. So this one, for obvious reasons, is the lowest car in my collection, and um, also the newest. So I do have to do deal with things like, you know, worrying about going down my driveway and uh, worrying about when I go up and down in certain areas or potholes, which Michigan loves to have. When I bought this car, it was kind of like a step up into a whole new world of cars. Like, one of the reasons why I was drawn to this car is because of the value aspect of it. Now, the C6 Z06, when I purchased it, and still now, was in kind of like a nice sweet spot where the used value has depreciated to the point where it's realistic to buy, but it's still also like a great fast car and can keep up with the brand new stuff rolling off the lot today. This car costs about $30,000, maybe a tiny bit above that uh, in the used market now. So when you think about that, that's like a brand new Chevy Equinox. I fell in love with this car when I actually did a review on it, not this one specifically, but I did a review on a C6 Z06 and then I drove it and like started to really experience the car and that is when I was hooked. Another thing about this car is that it's definitely, definitely a head turner. Like a lot of people notice you, a lot of people like almost respect you more because you drive it. Not at all that I like think you should buy a car for that. I do not agree with that at all. I don't think that you should buy a car just because you want other people to think that you're cool. I think that is silly. I mean, if you're spending your hard-earned money on something, sorry, it's kind of hard to vlog and drive at the same time. If you're spending your hard-earned money on something, you should definitely make sure it's something that you actually like and appreciate. Please, please do not fall into the trap that a lot of people do, and that is buying something, whether it be clothes, a newer car, or whatever, just because other people will like it. So while I'm out with the car, I gotta do a few things to uh, spruce it up a little bit. I'm gonna take it to the wash, and then I'm gonna fill it up with gas. Then I'm gonna find a spot where we can go around and uh, look at the car and take a look at some of the ins and outs of it. So speaking of gas and like gas mileage and everything, this car is actually not that bad on gas mileage. You can get about like 20 miles to the gallon. I get more like 15 just because I drive it a little harder. But like, yeah, if your goal is to get like as best gas mileage as possible, you can probably get, I'd say, like 22, 24 if you're driving pretty conservatively. So ideally, these cars will get cleaned by hand, by me, like whenever they're dirty, but it's kind of hard to keep up with everything. And like, so I'll usually just go through these touchless auto washes. I'll never take it through the, um, like the brush one. It's not gonna get it absolutely perfect, but it's good for now. 
So here we are in all of its glory. I have the 2006 Corvette Z06 behind me. One of the best things about this car that I love is this blue color. The color is called Lamont Blue. It really glistens very nicely in the sun and looks very great paired with some carbon fiber as we can see right here. This car is way faster than my Mustang and still just as fun to drive. I would say that this thing is much, much, much more focused on speed. Obviously, you have the hardtop and you have the manual transmission. To throw a few numbers at you, this thing's putting out 505 to the crank. I can estimate about 440, maybe four, maybe 450. That's a little bit pushing it to the wheels. Um, and zero to 60 in 3.5, which is pretty quick if you ask me. Talking a little bit about future plans for this car, I do plan to get some new uh, wheels and tires. I kind of wanted to go for a black theme, so I have wheels black, and then obviously I really, 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 really need new tires right now. My tires are super bald. So I figured while I'm getting new tires, I might as well get new wheels to go with. So taking a look at the interior of this car, it's pretty much very similar to the Mustang in the fact that it's relatively simple, but still pretty nice. It's not super crazy luxurious by any means, but the seats are pretty nice. I actually would say they're probably my favorite part of the interior. It's all around very nice and like simple. It's not going to be your most luxurious with Alcantara everywhere, or it's not a Mercedes. You know, this isn't what Corvette's about. And all that money was put into making the car nice, not necessarily making the interior nice. I would say this definitely has the best of 2006 te technology. So that comes with a lot of nice things. Like it does have the heads up display, which is super helpful while you're driving and makes your driving experience a lot easier while you don't have to take your eyes off the road. And you still do have a touch screen. So that's also a nice bonus. So popping the hood for you guys, we have the LS7 under here, an absolute beast of a motor. Talking more about my future plans for the LS, I plan to do at bare minimum like a heads cam build. So what that's going to be is um, like headers all the way, exhaust the back, and then a camshaft to uh, give it that nice sound and obviously the performance benefits that go along with it. And that's all going to be wrapped up with a tune. So that's going to be the first thing that I do to this car. One of the reasons why I'm kind of going with that uh, heads cam uh, package, I guess, if you will, is because this car, the LS7, if you know anything about these, they have a very common issue with the exhaust valves. Basically, you should definitely replace them or else it could cause a lot of catastrophic failure to your engine. You're gonna have to take off like all this stuff up front and basically everything that you would need to do in order to put a cam in there, you basically just have to slide the cam in there. So while you're paying all that labor and everything else to get that fixed, it is ec economically smart to build your car at the same time. I love, love, love this color of the car. I do want to couple it with some black elements like I said the taillights and the spoiler were here when I purchased it These aren't aftermarket taillights. They're just kind of like a cover, but I do really love the spoiler I think it follows the body line right there And we got this cool little sticker Caleb Plito subscribe on YouTube I would say that like the Mustang the back profile is my favorite of this car and the quad exhaust tips Even though they're dirty right now look really cool So now driving the Corvette Z06. This car is definitely pretty fast. I really enjoy driving it and it definitely keeps up with a lot of the cars today. Like I kind of hinted to earlier, one of the biggest things that drew me to this car is the value that you get for your money. Now, I kind of felt like I was uh, not getting my value for putting extra mods and everything into the Mustang where I was just kind of throwing money at something that was going to depreciate and really wasn't building like a huge V8 or anything like that. This car definitely screams value to kind of give you a hint of that type of value that it brings. So this car come, runs at about $30,000 right now in the used market. A similar year, Lamborghini Gallardo will run at about $80,000, maybe $90,000 in the used market. These cars are virtually very, very, very similar as it comes to performance. This car will easily run door to door next to a Lamborghini Gallardo that is double, close to sometimes even triple the price. The launch on this thing is absolutely incredible. still bone stock but that does not by any means mean it is slow the handling on this car is very rough it's not going to be like the most comfortable ride but everything about this car is geared toward performance so like that's what you're going to be getting yourself into if you buy a corvette you know this isn't going to be the most comfortable car it's not meant to be that. but besides the handling being kind of stiff this car is not terribly uncomfortable by any means i wouldn't have a problem taking this on like a smaller road trip or something like that yes it is not the biggest most practical car that you can get but there are 
are some things that make it a lot more practical than your average sports car. For example, being a two-seater, most sports cars and uh, supercars and things like that, you're going to have not a lot of room to store things. However, this being technically a hatchback because the hatch in the back opens up, you know, um, you get a lot more room to store things. That back space right there is actually a lifesaver. Unlike most Corvettes though, this is not a target top or it's not a convertible. So I can't take up just the top portion. The C6 Z06s and these years, they didn't they didn't allow that. That wasn't a thing. Whereas the uh, base model C6, you could do that on. So that is kind of upsetting that you can't take the top off. But I do have the Mustang if I did want to experience that topless feel that I could go to. So it's not a deal breaker. And I understand why they did it for performance reasons. But just something to think about if you yeah, purchasing a vehicle similar or something like that. Overall, I would say I'm very, very happy with the money I spent on this car. And after I build this thing, I'm excited to see where it'll take me. I think this is one of the most economical builds and cars you can do. And I'm very excited to see how it's going to turn out. Another thing about the handling of this car, just because it's a Corvette, you might think that, uh, oh, it's like an American car. It doesn't know how to corner or anything like that. That's not true at all. I can take this thing around corners much faster than I would be comfortable taking my Mustang. It has that track element to it, which is actually very fun to have and um, gives you a better overall car experience if you can drive your car more than just in a straight line. So there they are. The gang's all there. Look at that. So that's going to be my full and complete tour of my cars, everything I got, everything I own. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. If so, let me know down below. Let me know what you thought. Really appreciate it. Make sure to hit subscribe to get more type of content like this. I really hope to see you guys around. Smash that like button. And just as Stradmad would say, just like that, this vlog is over and I'm out.